Good day, YouTube viewers, Facebook friends, family and acquaintances, and associates. This is Lonnie. How you guys doing? Coming to you today with a Lonnie's Life Lesson video talking about um, child abuse. And also, joining me today is going to be Raymond R. Duke. Um, not only is he a counselor, he's also a minister and also a good dear friend of mine and who is taking time out of his busy schedule to do this video to do this video with me. Uh, so, Mr. Raymond. Hey, Lonnie. Thank you so You're much for doing this video with me. Um, there were a few things I wanted to touch on regarding this topic of child abuse. Um, this would be touching on recognizing child abuse, reporting the abuse, getting help, and overcoming the abuse. So this is part two of my video. Um, so, Mr. Raymond, I'm sorry, Mr. Duke, I have a few questions to ask you, if you don't mind answering okay. these questions for me. Let's get started. Okay. Um, the first question is, what are the signs of abuse? Abuse comes in all shapes, forms, and fashions. So for some people, it's really hard to actually recognize abuse, what it looks like. Because for some people, what's abuse to you may not be abuse to the next person. Your, for example, if, if it's child abuse, you may see a child who someone hits them in the head, mm -hmm. a parent pops them in the head because maybe they didn't move fast enough or didn't respond fast enough and somebody might see that as abuse. Whereas the parent might see it as, I just popped them in the head, why are you tripping? Uh, somebody else may actually shake the child because they're not paying attention or they're not responding the way they want them to. Okay. And somebody may perceive that as abuse. But also abuse is one of those things that it, it's such a wide spectrum because if you don't, if you get a kid and put him in front of the television with a toy and maybe a piece of fruit, that could be abuse because you want to uh, watch TV or play video games or hang out with your friends or be on the telephone or go do something else. So now the television becomes the babysitter and someone else may say, well, my mom sat me in front of the TV all the time. That wasn't abuse to me. But to someone else, it might be. So the forms of abuse and the type of abuse, withholding something from somebody. Um, everybody else sits down at the table and eats dinner, but, but I sit you in another room. That's abuse. Why can't you sit with everybody else and eat with everybody else? Um, uh, punishing you, sending you to your room without dinner. A lot of parents did that to kids. A lot of parents just probably still go to your room. And it's like, this this child is hungry. They're upstairs in their room. You send them to their room. After a while, they might fall asleep. That doesn't mean that they're not hungry. Also, abuse looks different ways in different cultures. You know, uh, what you say to a person. Our parents have got it really wrong. Those parents who said, sticks and stones may break my bones, but names may never hurt me. That was the worst that a mother could ever say to you. That was the most erroneous statement to tell a kid because, yeah, you hit me with a stick, it hurt it, it may have left a bruise or a scratch or whatever. However, the very negative names that you call me, the hateful things you say about me, those things still to this day linger in people's lives. Yeah. So when you say those things, it's because you're repeating what was said to you. What about the one where they say that I'd rather whoop your ass than have the police whoop your ass? Because they thought that that was the way it worked. It's like, before the ass whooping, what did you put in place? You know, mm -hmm. because someone said that this is, and I hate when people in church say generational curses and stuff like that because most people are repeating what they've heard. Yeah. So they repeat that stuff. It's, it's tradition. It's oral tradition. It's, it's grandma said it, great grandma said it, mama said it. But in, in reality, it's not about I'm going to beat your ass so that the police don't have to. It's like, what did you put before that? 
What's going on in this person's life, world, and affairs that made them exhibit a behavior that you felt like, well, if the police get hold to you, they're going to do this, so I'm going to do this, so you'll learn not to do this again, mm -hmm. so that, and sometimes you did not invest time and energy and love and caring into this person so they won't go out and do types of things that the police might get involved with and in the police in 2016 would probably not only be harassed but kill you. Exactly. So those things meant something to the sayer and no. not necessarily to the hearer. And then the sayer of that got it from somewhere. You know, mm. I brought you in this world. I'm going to take you out. You didn't bring me in this world. You know, as some of the parents who said that was under, under anesthesia, and the doctor did a C-section or whatever, I understand where that comes from and why people say that, but they say it because they heard somebody else say it. And so they thought, this is a threat. You know, I'll make this threat. This will get to you, and you'll do X, Y, and Z. I'm not an advocate of abuse in any shape, form, or fashion. Mm -hmm. You know, even I, I have some wonderful friends, and, and we joke so to speak, at one another, and we make jokes at one another. But even at that, we have to be careful because there's truth in every joke. So when I make a fun of you, or I make a crack, that's a form of abuse. And will it hit a nerve of something that somebody said when you were little? If they called you ugly and stupid and fat, and then I'm laughing with a bunch of friends and I call you ugly, stupid, and fat. Well, I've called you ugly, stupid, and fat before, but this time when I said, you knocked me on the ground, because it struck a nerve. It reminded you of something that somebody else said and the way they said it. So that mm -hmm. abuse and that neglect lingers on. So when someone wants to get a, a list and start writing a list of all the different types of abuse, they would never finish that list. They would be old and gray and deteriorate trying to list all the things. There is physical, mental, sexual, spiritual, mm -hmm. Uh, all kinds of abuse out there that some people wouldn't even agree with because they've never experienced well, what do you, what do you mean by spiritual abuse? Because people abuse people from a spiritual standpoint. I would tell you something. I mean, it was done to black people. We know Jesus. We love Jesus. Jesus is, is one of us. Okay, so you're white. You tell me about this God and you tell me about this Jesus. And, and that terrifies me. So now you have me in your clutches and if Jesus is your friend and your buddies with this Jesus and he can do all of this stuff, then maybe I need to treat you a certain way so you don't tell your buddy Jesus to do those things to me. That's a beauty. Really? Because I told you that to win you over. I told you that to hold something over your head. I told you that to control. And so abuse, even once you make the list, then you got to go back and make a new list of Okay, so you did this abuse to me, but for what? Was it for control? Was it to keep me in what they thought was the straight and narrow? Mm -hmm. in, the, in the African American or, or black or colored or whatever they are this week, uh, in that perspective of things, you look at what was done to me, was only done to me because it was done to mom and dad. Okay. And it was done to their parents. So someone grows up getting punished by... Um, the father having a conversation with him. Mm -hmm. And then you back in your mind, you're thinking, oh, just send me to my room already. This lecture is more punishing to me than anything you can possibly do to me. Somebody might say, oh, I'd rather my father just hit me than to give me that long, drawn out, oh my God, will you just shut up lecture. Yeah. And then somebody else, well, my mother pinched me. That was enough. Or the threat was enough. Some people carried those threats out. Some people got hit with a stick, a belt, a shoe, uh, an extension cord. Those type of abuses because somebody thought it was okay. Mm -hmm. But when you think about it, and because we're people of color, people of color did things because that's what they were taught. It was ingrained in them from slavery. So some of this stuff is post-traumatic slavery mm -hmm. abuse. Think about it. If the master said... In order to control slaves, I need to do this. So the slaves watched when Katopi Mango didn't do what he was supposed to do, master beating or had the overseer beating. Okay. Oh, that's how you get what you want. All right, I want my kid to do this. My kid won't do this, so I beat him. Because that's what happened to me. And that's, But it didn't happen to you. 
It happened to your ancestors. So your ancestors said in order to keep you in the straight and narrow so master don't do this to you, I'm going to beat you. Mm -hmm. Or to keep you in line, I'm going to beat you. The old thing from Color Purple, you told Harpo to beat me. So those types of abuses are historically passed down from other people and they exhibit them and administer those abuses because they were exhibited and administered to them. So you kind of touched on a lot of my um, <laughs> topics uh, as far as the mental abuse, um, which was something that I know I experienced growing up, which you kind of touched on about how being um, not brainwashed, but your parents What would you say, what would be some of the signs of mental abuse? Well, how would you know that someone is mentally abusing you? Again, goes back to, I don't know. I, did, I didn't perceive this as being mental abuse because that's my mother. She loves me. That's my father. He loves me. Why, why would they abuse me? So these mind games, like to tell a kid, if you come downstairs, I'm going to beat your ass. If you don't come downstairs, I'm going to come upstairs and beat your ass. You don't know what to do. That's mental. You don't know what to do. It's like if I come downstairs, I'm going to get it. But if I don't come downstairs, I'm going to get it. What, I, what am I supposed to do? Mm -hmm. That's mental abuse. Or giving a child a belt okay. and saying, go to your room. Call me when you're ready for your whooping. What? Who does that? That your mind is going through all kinds of trauma that's not even occurred yet because you are anticipating, oh my God, I got this belt. He told me to go to, so I'm in my room with this belt. My dad gave me this belt and told me to stand in, in my room and call me when I, who is ever ready to get beat with a belt? <laughs> like, if you're going to hit me with this belt, why don't you just do it now? Why would you give it to me and say, go to my room and call me when you're ready? Okay. That's mental abuse. Um, mental abuse is a kid has brothers and sisters who lie on them and they get punished. It's a lie. The mother doesn't investigate it. She doesn't assume, you know, she just goes by, well, someone said it, well, it must be true. Okay. You know, parents did that a lot and they may do it a lot today that, well, if everybody's saying it, it must be true. If it walks like a duck and quacks like a duck, it must be a duck. No, dummy. It's a wolf in a duck outfit. Yeah. It doesn't mean it's a duck because it, it can... It does not mean the comedians can mock other stars. That does not mean it's them because that was the voice on the phone. True. You know, I had an episode when I was growing up. My, my, you know, my mother came in the door. My little brother was behind the door. As soon as she walked in the door, you know, he smacked his hands together and he yelled... Like, like, and held his face. My mother didn't investigate that situation. She just came through the door and smacked me in the face to let you put your hands in that boy's face. But then he began to laugh because it was like, but then he thought about it, wait. So by the time I could explain it to her of what went down, my mindset was, no. I'm not going to waste my time and energy because I felt some kind of way about, are you this type of person that you are going to act out. You know, you freaked out before you found out. And so you're the adult here, so I'm not going to come in and try to help you work through this process. So mental abuse happens when it affects how you think and how you feel about a person, place, or thing. You okay. know, when you tell kids um, if you don't stop misbehaving, I'm going to take you to the doctor and the doctor's going to give you a shot. Well, you're terrified. <laughs> they use that as a form of punishment. Sit yeah. still or I'm going to take you to the doctor and he's going to give you a shot. Or keep it up, I'm going to make you go in the closet and it's a monster in the closet. Mm -hmm. You know, or I'm going to put you in the basement and lock the door and all the monsters are down there. You don't think at the time that you're going to abuse this person, but these things people care. I know some adults that are afraid to go to bed at night with the lights off. They have to have the TV going or a light on or something. And I mean, I'm not talking, talking about no 15, 19, 20 year old. I'm talking about 30, 40, 50 year olds who are terrified. 
And they're yeah. very much adults, very responsible adults, uh, responsible jobs and positions and careers in life. You turn that light out. They could be snoring, sneaking in, turn that light out. They're up. It's, you know, so, something's happening to my safety zone. You know, because of fears from being a kid growing up and, and some of those things. And that's mental. Because no one's doing anything to them physically or emotionally. It's, mm -hmm. in, it's, it's all in here for, okay. for some of those things that have occurred. As I say, remember, if you don't love you, well, nobody else will. And if you don't love you, you better wake up because it's a beautiful feeling. Until next time, guys, look for me in the sunset. Bye.